Hello. Well, I am Lady Starlight, and um, so I have a very strange um, and interesting bio. I um, started off as actually a go-go dancer. Um, that was my first like involvement in nightlife. So, um, so in the club club land, I started as a go-go dancer in, like '60s, um, and that's not a stripper, just so everybody knows. <laughs> in the U.S., it doesn't mean a stripper, but a podium dancer, I think, as they say in the U.K. Um, at like '60s mod nights. So um, I've always been very interested in the history of rock and roll, and I started DJing um, basically because I, nobody was playing what I wanted to hear, so I was like, ah, this all sucks, I have to do it myself, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, so that's how I learned how to DJ, I was like, ah, I don't, not hearing what I want to hear, so I did like a 70s glam rock party with all these like obscure, you know, possibly bad sort of 70s, early 70s glam. And then moved on to uh, collect and DJ heavy metal. And then um, eventually went on the road with Judas Priest as the <laughs> tour DJ. <laughs> and uh, that was, it was absolutely amazing. And um, also, um, oh yes, I have a very good friend who you might have heard of, uh, Lady Gaga. And her and I were became friends in New York, um, where I'm originally from. and. Uh, so she was doing like pop music. We were, became very good friends via um, her boyfriend at the time. And just very organic, like, she's like, hey, do you want what? to make, you know, maybe DJ heavy metal records in between my pop songs on stage? I was like, Psh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Any weird performance opportunity, I'm, th I'm there. <laughs> the key to my success is never saying no to anything. Well, not anything, but uh, <laughs> not to not anyone. <laughs> So, uh, so that's how I sort of started in <coughs> to working, you know, outside of uh, New York and sort of touring uh, the world with her. And um, on, I was on three different tours. You know, we meet, remained extremely good friends. And despite like actually having uh, nothing really musically in common, um, it was about the presentation. It was about like you know the friendship and she was like okay do you want to come open the tour and i was like okay and well can i do this uh sure i was like oh okay wow so i could play metal the first tour and then i did performance art a very alienating performance art on the second one i'm like can i do this uh, absolutely and then i started making live techno and that's when i did on the last one <coughs> and as some people know as some people don't this is how i met uh, a surgeon and he was in <coughs> who i work with um, and was really sort of, you know, a very huge, important person in my life and very encouraging and really kind of brought me into the techno world. And um, so him and his partner were at one of, was at the Birmingham uh, Lady Gaga show. And then I was, mentioned him in, in when I was doing this uh, tour uh, opening with live techno, I would make sure to, because I would make sure to talk about, um, to talk, because then it's in an environment, like when you're doing like just a performance, you're not expected to, especially in techno, not expected to do a banter with the audience. So that was like a, an expectation when you're at a show like this of like, they're waiting for me to say something. And I'm like, oh, what do I say? And they want me to say something, I have to explain. So I was like, oh, may, I guess I have to explain what I'm doing. And that I was, and also thinking about the audience because they're all really young and they're clearly interested in s dance music and also interested in a different way of doing things being, you know, she's very inclusive of different, ge you know, different kinds of gender, sexuality. So obviously these young kids are interested in something else other than like what's straightforward commercial pop music. So I was like, wow, what a perfect opportunity to kind of turn them on to techno because it could be like a gateway. I was like, oh, maybe it could corrupt them in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> so in order to corrupt them into the right direction, I had to explain what I was doing, like, and explain that, no, actually, you can make music, dance music, not on a computer, because I think a lot of people just don't know that who are young. And uh, so, and also making sure to talk about the artists that I really like so that they have something to Google 
like Jeff Mills, you know, surgeon, underground resistance, you know, like things like that. So they have something to, oh, well, what is this all about? Oh, okay. And then it could start that, the gateway. So that was like my main goal. And the same with the other tours of like to open people's minds to, to something different because now we can all curate our environments so much that you don't have things, you don't have information coming at you that you don't already want. So I was like, oh, this is amazing. So public service, that's what I was doing. <laughs> A social worker of sorts. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, so you'll hear a lot of, um, uh, <laughs> the best public speaker. So bear with me. Um, um, so, <laughs> so I guess um, what I will do now is talk about my system. Was that a good intro? I don't know. Set to explain who I am. I'm like, <laughs> I don't need like a profile. I'm in a relationship. I'm living in Berlin. <laughs> All my biographical information. So anyway, oh, oh I got into um, Euro Rack via surgeon who, um, uh, important part, that was what I was starting to talk about. <laughs> um, basically, when I first started playing techno, I was using, this is actually, the, M, the MFB Tansberry was the drum machine I've had, like the longest of all my stuff. So I was using this, and I was also using the Roland MC505, the groove box. That's how I started using gear because it was everything in one, and while it doesn't sound terribly powerful, it was the best way to learn how to make uh, live techno to get into gear because you literally have everything there. And it's so complicated that if you can menu dive in that, there's like nothing that seems more overwhelming <laughs> than that. And you're like, oh, I can do that. There's just it's a beast. So it was one machine too. So it was really great. And um, But then when, after I met Surgeon, we totally connected and I was like, ah, you know, we just like had this like, understanding of each other like a similar kind of person and um our motivation for doing things was very much the same of like kind of you know some people were both of the mind that people don't always know what they need they might know what they want but they don't know what they need <laughs> so to just give them something that maybe they don't like it but maybe they it will inspire them to do something that they do like even if they hate it or then grow to like it or say i can do that better great all of that is a good result. <laughs> so, um, so when we first, so then we talked about it. And it was like, okay, let's do, let's do this on stage together. And I was like, so excited that he wanted to do that. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe this. And um, so, and he was using uh, his Euro rack, and then I stood on stage and heard it, and I was like. Oh my God, that's what it's supposed to sound like. Oh dear, <laughs> like ah, my stuff sounded so weak. It was just like the most, and you don't know until you're, you know, hearing your own another digital or even analog sound next to it, how good it sounds. That was the only way for me to really get it. Of like, oh, okay, shit. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, eventually, then that's where I'm gonna go. So it's really just a matter of hearing it directly compared to what I was accustomed to using digitally. And you're just like, oh, I guess I'll go home now. <laughs> <You know? laughs> or, or, get in, or build your own case. <laughs> so I decided to build my own case and not go home. <laughs> um, so for me, so my said, so, you know, working with techno, there's a very specific, the rack, the case has to really be geared towards doing specific things very well and very fast because the expectation, especially at like a festival or a club, is people are accustomed to hearing a DJ where, you know, the kick drum's coming out and the attention span is short and, uh, uh, you know, like, actually make that makes it a little bit longer, but you have to keep moving compared to what a DJ is able to do. And um, so the key, the most important thing for me is having things where it's very easy to make transitions and very easy to uh, change sounds quickly with very little hands. Patching things live is not, 
is almost never possible for me because it's dark and I'm like, what is this? And then I'm trying to manage this and oh shit, the kick drum, I have to change it. It's been going on for too long. The same kick drum for like 10 minutes. So, <laughs> so it's like a matter of having two hands. So, um, so everything must be patched in a way that maybe one knob or two knobs can change things pretty drastically to create interest because people get very bored very fast. <laughs> It's really easy to have like the same kick drum or the hi hats going for like five minutes. And you're like, oh, maybe I should change that. <laughs> That's pretty boring. So um, the most important thing for me is my sequencer. And um, my I the MFB uh, sequence 03, SEQ 03. I don't really know. This is like absolutely the best uh, sequencer for me, and I think it's great and very underrated, I believe, because every channel has the ability to do f one of, you know, four, f well, eight functions or something. So you have, uh, you, it can either be a CV, a gate, uh, um, attack and decay envelope, um, or an LFO. And then with the un within that, each track can also be, um, the direction can be, ran it can be forward, randomized, up and down, like do, 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 do. So you can actually, and it's easy to change in the middle if you want it to just change. So it really has so many uh, capabilities. And uh, so it's been extremely helpful. And I have to have the bare bones. I can obviously change with the sounds, but the sequences, I cannot do those live. It's like super boring for people to watch. And then you're just like, oh God. Uh. There's a lot of anxiety involved in the whole thing. So it's about the having to move so fast. And also, you know, you're putting on a show, so people want to, s they don't want to watch you, like, uh, 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 you know, sequencing something. And then the attention span goes. So I like to have sequences, I can s easily switch them around, but just to have like a bare bones thing where I can do something else if I want to, but there's, there's a structure there that I can fall back on if, things go wrong, which they always do. And, uh, <laughs> which, you know, they always do. So, um, so what I'm using for um, my percussion is very, very simple. The 909 uh, bass drum from Tip Top, duh, techno. <laughs> and then the 909 hats. Um, then I also use, still use, because I don't want to take up so much space in my rack for drums, because I think it's kind of boring. Doesn't really, it's not boring, but I feel in some way that the space, with all the things you can do with modular, like drum modules that sound like an existing drum machine is kind of not the best use of space. So I'm kind of slowly taking them out uh, in favor and, um, of using the tan spare. And then here's my trusty machine drum, which I'll talk about that later. Um, and I also have the MFB clap, which is great. Um, I'm a big MFB fan, if, in case you can't tell. <laughs> um, so uh, that's the drums that are included in my package. And uh, so the... Um, the oscillator I'm using is the uh, Verbos Electronics Complex Oscillator. And I actually don't have any other oscillator uh, because it can really uh, do everything that you need it to do, especially since I also have the Tip Top 1 sampler, which is like, I love this thing so much. I spent so much time with it, and um, I just love it. It's such a great thing to have within the whole system to really get different sounds and uh, uh, yeah just to and the, the way I have um, the one patched is if you're familiar with the one there's like five different modes of playback where one will be um, a challenge I was originally having was that um, gosh, now I can't think of the, the modes but but it would just be like a gate on and then off. One would just cue the, anyway, we can look at the manual later. But anyway, there's a way to have it, like if you hadn't, like if you just do the looping mode and it's a long sample, it'll just be like a pad. But I was like, 
you know, sometimes you want to have a sequence with that synth sound and changing the modes in while you're performing is just not really possible. It will go wrong and then it'll be on the wrong samples. There's no menu and you're just like one, two, three, four. If anybody's ever used it, it's really not so fun. Sometimes they're like, oh, it's the wrong sample. Ah. And then you're stuck with it. Um, so, but the way that I overcame that is I have a looping mode and then I put it, um, I have two different sequences. I have one that just, you know, triggers it. The one that controls the pitch of it. And then I also have one that has a uh, gate sequence that I use with the quadra. And then I um, have now, I now have it at, uh, in the um, MA, VCA, the one that, is it, that uh, Tom had recommended to me and it was, it's the best thing ever, so thank you. <laughs> and. Uh, so that's been really, really helpful because you can have two different uh, CV sequences uh, controlling it at the same time. So talk about a convenient way to change something really quickly. You just go uh, there and they c blend as well. So you can have one sequence coming for me coming from the IntelliGel Quadra. And then, s and then I also use the, uh, the Verbos Voltage Multistage, which has, I just got like maybe two months it's so epic it's just like and I'm still I'll never I'll learn how to use it maybe in five years of all the things you can do with it is, is there certain things that you're like ah how does that work oh well I'd, I'll do it this way okay great so it's just has it's such a great such it's really changed um the way the variation I can get out of it because the thing it's a perfect complement to the MFB sequencer because that's you know it's really hard to change to improvise with the sequences, but this is like the perfect complement where then I can have an easy to um, improvise sequencer to complement it. So, so I have like, you know, the hard sequence here and then I have something I can just kind of change coming through the other one. So that's an easy way to have like uh, <coughs> minimal sequences, minimal sounds, but maximum, maximum variation. Oh, <laughs> it's like a diet, like a soda ad in the U.S. Maximum variation. <laughs> um, so, um, oh, and so, um, geez, now what? <laughs> now what? <laughs> okay, so, um, <laughs> the, oh, and I'll talk about the, um, the, uh, my two different lead or bass lines coming from the uh, Verbos, the complex op oscillator. I have um, one of the direct like square outs and then the master both going, both coming sequences into the quadra, which then go to both channels, both, uh, both uh, channel inputs of the uh, Optimix. So then I can easily also have two things going and just kind of mix between them, which I was doing something else before that wasn't working very well. So that's also really been you know, helpful. Um, and then also I've like to, um, I put the one because uh, as me and Jesse were talking about, sometimes the, the way that, that uh, tip top has like consumers get, the sa get your own samples on here requires you to get it in like a 16 bit. Um, so you hear the original sample and then you hear it and you're like, oh. but so then I put that to compensate for that. I put it through the, uh, uh, make noise herbiverb, which makes everything just sound epic, you know, <laughs> no matter what you put through it. So it's like a good fix. You're like, oh, that sounds bad. Ah, ooh. <laughs> so that's quite good. Um, so it's worth the money. <laughs> oh, amazing. I'm so great. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's really good, and I also like to, um, I've just started um, using a clock divider to, to sort of uh, modulate uh, different uh, parameters, which is good, you know, very uh, percussive um, ways of, you know, quickly uh, modulating things so that they sound more interesting, and using uh, that clock divider to uh, change the decay, which is working out very well. So 
I guess I should play some music, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> I was like, okay, enough of talking. <laughs> and yeah, obviously, I, I, afterwards, we could, you know, answer any questions. It's always hard to know, well, what, what do people want to know? <laughs> oh, they'll ask. <laughs> okay. These faders are up. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm.